Now we will move on to the verification of Joule's law. Joule's law is verified using a simple device that is your Joule's calorimeter. It consists of your resistance R coil enclosed in a copper calorimeter. The ends of the coil are connected to two terminals fixed to the lid of the calorimeter. There will be a stirrer and a thermometer T are inserted to through two holes in the lid. Two third of the calorimeter is filled with water. The calorimeter is enclosed in a wooden box to minimize the loss of heat. There will be a battery and a key and a rheostat and there will be an ammeter which is connected in series. It is connected in series with the calorimeter. A voltmeter is connected across the ends of the coil. The initial temperature of water is measured as theta 1. Let W be the heat capacity of the calorimeter and contents. Now your current I1 is passed for a time of T. The final temperature theta 2 is noted. The quantity of heat gained by the calorimeter and the contents is calculated as the initial joules law of heating effect H1 is equal to the heat capacity into the final temperature minus initial temperature. This experiment is repeated by passing current I2, I3, a variety of current through the same coil for the same interval of time T and the corresponding quantities of heat H1, H2, as three were calculated. It is found that the heat generated H1 is directly proportional to the current passed and H2 is directly proportional to its relevant current and H3 is directly proportional to the relevant current. So it indicates that H divided by I square is equal to A that is the heat generated is directly proportional to the square of the current as the law of current is verified. We are trying to show an induction cooker here with the heat generator. Further moving the relation with the law of resistance. The same amount of current I is passed for the same time through T through different coils of resistance R1, R2 and R3. The corresponding quantities of heat gained is H1, H2 and H3 and its calculator. So H1 is directly proportional to R1, H2 is directly proportional to R2, H3 is directly proportional to R3 which indicates H is directly proportional to R that is H is directly proportional to the resistance. This is referred to as law of resistance. Further moving the Joule's law and heating effect with the time, the same amount of current I is passed through the same resistance R for different intervals of time T1, T2 and T3. The corresponding quantities of heat gained are H1, H2 and H3 and it is found that the H1 is directly proportional to T1. So the heat generated is directly proportional to time. So it indicates the law of time is verified. 